Hello everybody, it's Mikey, our game from scratch, and today we're going to talk about the Zenko Game Engine. Now, completely ignore the graphic on screen in front of you, it sort of spoilers what I'm going to talk about. Uh, but first, let's talk about what exactly a Zenko is. Now, once upon a time, this was called the Paradox Game Engine. It's made by a company called Silicon Studios. They're actually got a very good pedigree that we'll look at in a minute. But basically, it is a C-Sharp 7-powered modern component-based game engine. And you may groan a bit because, yes, there are a lot of game engines on the market. And what should separate this one from the pack? Well, we'll get into that a little bit. This, uh, you can see here, is the Zenko game engine running. It hits all the target platforms you'd expect. Uh, so uh, your various desktop operating systems, various mobile, and I think there's a couple of consoles in there to boot. So it's pretty well supported across the board. Uh, built around a very modern, full PBR workflow renderer. So it's got a good built-in renderer. As I said, entirely C-sharp 7 on the back end, tightly integrates with Visual Studio. You basically just open up your project, click open in ID. There's a plugin IDE. There's a plugin directly in Visual Studio for integrating back into the Zenko game engine. Um, you know, it's, it's very straightforward and clean. I'll select an object in the scene. As you will see, it is a component-based system. Um, so you've got your entities, you add components to them. Pretty much exactly what you would expect from a game engine this day and age. Uh, you got your various different assets you can place, you can bring new ones in. It has full uh, pipeline support into, I believe it's FPX objects being imported. Um, you got nice object preview once they're in here, as you can see with this object right here. You can see the pieces that go together to make it, the various different components that build it up, etc. It's It's a nice, clean, modern game engine. I actually did a uh, closer look at, I will We'll link that in the comments down below if you want to learn a bit more about the Zenko game engine. But really, it's it's modern, it's clean, it's nice, and it's in a crowded market with way, way, way too many game engines right now anyways. So why should you be interested in the Zenko game engine? Well, there's a couple reasons. Now, first off, I did say that they have pedigree. So this is Zenko.com. This is where you can go ahead and download the engine. And the engine is currently free-ish, and that's something we're gonna to get to in a second. Um, now, it's partially open source right now. The um, runtime is available completely open source, although ironically, the source code is currently not available. I don't know if that's a misconfiguration or part of what I'm going to talk about later in this video. And then, of course, all the tools, the editor, all that stuff are closed sourced. So, um, the reason why you should care a bit is because the company behind it, first off, it is a solid engine. I've played around with it. It's definitely capable of making games. It's a very um, modern, clean, um, simple kind of thing. It reminds a lot of the Stingray engine just with C-sharp on the back end. So it's minimalistic, clean, but uh, full functioning. So it's, it's a capable engine in its own right. But the company behind it, Silicon Studio, that actually spins off of uh, Silicon Graphics Japan from years and years back now. SGI or Silicon Graphics is one of the preeminent graphics companies out there. And these guys kind of carried that on. Now, they're, um, they're also a game studio. So they've actually made a number of games, some of which you may have heard of. They're very Japanese. So uh, Bravely Default, Bravely Default, Second uh, End Layer, Grand Sphere, uh, 3D got, dot Game Heroes, and a couple of other ones over the course of the last decade. So they're a very well-established game company, but what they're probably most known for is middleware. Um, so they make a particle effect authoring tool, Yeebus, um, which I don't actually know what Yeebus does immediately, um, but it has been used in, you can see, uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, Bloodborne. You know, these are some pretty legit games you've definitely heard of, and on top of that, they make... Um, well, more and more Yeebuses, Mizuchi, a real-time graphics engine, uh, and then, of course, Zenko, which is their C-sharp engine, which, as I mentioned earlier, crafts platform with iOS, Android, Universal uh, Windows platform, Linux, and PlayStation 4 support. Um, so they have pedigree. The people making this stuff know what they're doing. Now, where it gets a little weird is their licensing. Now, they haven't actually been, like I said, there hasn't been an update of Zenko since September. So people were wondering, they went a little dark on this one. Um, so there you see the last update was the September 14th release right here. And then they basically made it so that their free version was free until April 2018. So the Pro, there is a free version right now, always has been, uh, basically gives you um, access to the Zenko game engine as long as you make less than $200,000 a year. Well, what they just announced uh, today is that they're gonna basically be changing so as of April, um, I don't know why that screen flickering on their webpage, so sorry if that stays annoying. But as of uh, tomorrow, I guess that would be, uh, Zenko Pro and Zenko Pro Plus no longer exist. Uh, the 
Free versions, Enco Personal is still free for personal use and for businesses of less than $200,000 uh, US in annual revenue, um, or you have to buy a custom plan from them. And if you currently uh, qualify for either the Zenco Pro or Pro Plus, basically if you downloaded it already, you are grandfathered until April 2019. You can continue to use it in that capacity. Um, so it, it's uh, weird where exactly they're going with their licensing. Um, but if you head on over to their Japanese webpage, it starts to get a little bit more clear. So let's head on over to the news release from Silicon Studios. So this is a slightly different release than what they did on their blog. And basically it's the same thing though. So basically as of March, pricing is broken down or was, is broken. Okay, that's confusing terminology. But basically they have um, last month or previously the pricing went there's the free version, uh, which we said $200,000 or less. Then they had Pro and Pro Plus, which were at two different price tiers, and then Custom, which basically if you had special requirements or needed to work with them or whatever. But as of April 1st, basically they're getting rid of everything. So Pro is gone, Pro Plus is gone, uh, Personal is gonna stick around, so that $200,000 or less one. Now let's get to the part where this starts to get interesting. And again, there's a reason why, we we'll go back to my title graphic here, there is a question mark here. Now, what they're essentially saying is here, we are also considering releasing the free version of Zenko as an open source community project. We believe this will continue to grow the uh, growth of the game industry, helping developers create games and more quickly and freely. And that would be awesome, to be honest, because the core framework of Zenko and the source code from what I went through already. So if they are actually releasing everything, the editor, uh, the runtimes, everything else, completely uh, free to the market, and basically they're gonna concentrate on um, doing basically commercial support for large customers, uh, that could be win-win for everybody. But if you had this new um, stable base, modern C-sharp game engine suddenly out there in the community, well, we could have another open source competitor in the works. But of course, we are sitting on that considering releasing. Um, so, you know, if you want to see this happen, do hit them up on Twitter, let them know that yes, you're down behind this, or um, I guess we can basically just keep an eye on it and see exactly what happens with this, but it's definitely a very cool potential. And even if they don't open source it, there is some news here in that uh, they got rid of their pro licensing, personal stays free, and the um, uh, people that are grandfathered in continue to have pro for another year for free. So, you know, that's cool for existing Zenko developers. But there's a bit of a gotcha there because I have a strange feeling that we're not going to see public facing development on this anymore. So if they don't open source the code for Zenko, Zenko is probably as good as dead. So let's hope Silicon Studios does follow through and they release that source code out there. Um, it could be a potentially a great boon, especially if they go with like an MIT or Apache 2 license, something that's very liberal in what it allows us to do because then you could instantly have a new modern open source cross-platform option right away and that would be pretty freaking awesome so i'm hoping that this happens um it is a cool enough engine that if it does people should take it very seriously people should pick it up and run with it and i'd like to see that happen so if there's anyone from um, silicon studios listening to this particular post uh, i would love to see you guys open it up i think there would be a community around it um so uh, hopefully if you're listening, please go ahead and do it. And to the rest of you, uh, what do you think? Are you interested in Zenko, especially if it goes um, full open source and becomes a uh, you know another major open source option out there? Uh, are you using Zenko today or Zenko today? And what do you think of it? Uh, what do you think of these changes? Are you worried about uh, what's going to happen going forward? Now, the people um, that are working out there, so they're gonna focus on custom tier for enterprises. So if you're a big company using Zenko, you got nothing to worry about because that's actually where they are focusing their business going forward, but I would be a little worried if I was using Zenko in this uh, intermediate category because um, I'm not 100% certain that we're going to see another update. I would love to hear from uh, Zenko or Silicon Studios that they're going to continue supporting this thing in a public manner, but this wording kind of makes me think that they're not going to um, with this whole focus on the enterprise thing. So let's hope they do, in fact, release that source code. Well, anyways, uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And again, if you want a little bit more hands time on with the Zenko engine, um, other than, you know, download it and play with it yourself, if you've used any modern component-based uh, game engine, if you've used uh, Unity or CryEngine or uh, even um, Unreal or Godot or close enough, you'll be able to figure this guy out pretty, pretty quickly. Like that. And we're kind of getting to about the, the universal game engine stage in life here. Um, so just download it and play around with it. Nothing to lose on that front. Or as I 
mentioned earlier, I did do a closer look at hands-on. I will link the uh, text version of that on Game From Scratch down below, as well as the YouTube video. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the Zenko Game Engine, do be sure to check those out. Um, they're a relatively recent version, but it is a cool engine. So I am really hopeful that it does, in fact, become open-sourced. All right. So uh, let me know what you think. I will see you all later. Goodbye.